Texas to your front porch. It's Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine. Radio worth listening to. Brought to you each weekday from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the Gospel Radio Network. Your host, Brother Rafael Ramirez, with Pope Joy, and Mike Mon. And joining us every Friday from San Francisco, California, Hi, uh, hello, my friends, and welcome to Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine. My name is Rick Pope Joy, and uh, I have the distinct privilege and the wonderful pleasure of serving as your host today as uh, uh, we have come to uh, the time for our uh, Bible study. We certainly want to uh, uh, remind you that this is a Bible study or a Bible uh, a study hall for the brave. And uh, what that means is we make absolutely no apologies uh, for the presentation of the truth. Uh, the truth is that which will set us free. And uh, so we cannot apologize for that which uh, sets men free. It is the words of God, and uh, we cannot apologize for God. We'll leave that up to God, and he'll do any apologizing he needs to do, and he does not in the day of judgment. And so we will be uh, forthright, we will be bold in our presentation of the truth, uh, but at the same time, we will do so with the most loving respect for God, his word, for the souls of men, and uh, for the gospel of Christ. And uh, so that's what we mean by this is a study hall for the brave, for the spiritual-minded Bible student. And so I hope that you are prepared and poised and uh, ready, yes, to study, uh, to meditate, to reflect upon the precious book divine. We have been focusing our attention uh, for the last nine. This is installment number 10 uh, in a series of lessons on the human psyche and uh, this may be the final aspect of this second tier. The first tier, you remember, uh, was dealing with Psalm 23. Uh, the second tier is dealing with the book of Philippians, and in particular, Philippians now chapter 4 and verse number 8, where we run into the law of displacement that we've mentioned before on the program, but we run into it here in Philippians 4 and verse number 8, demonstrating the uh, fact that this law is a necessary element in the retaining and uh, or uh, the retraining of the human psyche. Sometimes it's about the training process, and a man grows up uh, in uh, the nurture and admonition of the Lord. He continues on that process throughout his entire life. He may have uh, times in which he fails. We know that. But at the same time, he is on uh, that journey, never shirking uh, from uh, uh, that particular direction that he is uh, going. As uh, is stated with many of the great Bible characters. Uh, they were they walked with God. Uh, Enoch, uh, Noah is described as a man uh, who walked with God, a man that uh, I, I love uh, as uh, Genesis chapter 6 uh, portrays the world in such darkness that uh, uh, it portrays Noah in this fashion. Verse number 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations he describes of Noah. Noah was a just man and a perfect and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with 
God. It would later say that he obeyed God. He did everything that God asked him to do in regards to the pattern. And that is such a beautiful statement with regards uh, to the gospel or the grace of God. I see that uh, as we are introducing our lesson that our uh, fellow Bible students are beginning to join us. I see that uh, uh, the Higgins uh, from Vider, Texas, uh, uh, Brother McDaniels from uh, Pikeville, Tennessee, that uh, Brother Furness uh, from, uh, uh, well, I forget where Brother Furness is from. Uh, he's from Georgia. Uh, I believe that is correct, from Valdosta. And uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Uh, and uh, But good to see him. Good to see uh, Brother David with us from India. And uh, always good to have our fellow uh, Bible students uh, with us. And I know that we have several more. Uh, you are certainly welcome to give us a notation of where you are from so that we, your fellow Bible students might have a record of that. We certainly appreciate that. But let's see here, what else do we have on the agenda before we get started? I do want to uh, give an invitation to uh, uh, all uh, that are listening, whatever venue you might be listening on, whether it's Facebook Live, whether you're listening on uh, TGRN uh, and uh, uh, through that means, or you're listening to us via WJHF 106.9 FM in the Florence, Alabama area, whatever. Uh, oh, you know, I forget that every time, Brother Furness. Uh, uh, my humble apologies. Uh, uh, we do have a fella here, uh, our, I, and I get you two mixed up. I don't know why, but uh, Brother Furness is from uh, Purcell, Oklahoma. My, some old stomping grounds. Uh, I was actually born in Winniewood, raised in Bridge Creek, uh, went to school in Tuttle, and uh, uh, well, did a little stint in Oklahoma City, but I was glad to finally get out of there. <laughs> and uh, uh, But uh, it is good to uh, uh, good to see you again. And uh, uh, I see that uh, Brother uh, Javon Jesse is here uh, from Hyderabad, uh, India, and the congregation there. We're so glad that you can be with us, especially after your, uh, uh, your uh, sickness and hospitalization. We're glad that uh, you are with us again. Uh, that's why you got to remind old people, and uh, I've become old people, I guess. I got a lot of gray hair. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I tell my wife all the time, I'm just fat, worn out, broken down, and uh, old at that. So, uh, but uh, nevertheless, we press on uh, regardless of the uh, hindrances that we might have developed over uh, our age, right? And uh, so, but we're glad that you are uh, joining us for this Bible study. You are also welcome. Uh, we don't emphasize this a lot, but uh, you are also welcome to join us on the phone. You can give us a call at 405-428-2440. Once again, that is 405-428-2440. And uh, we would love to have a conversation with you in regards to a question, comment that you might have regarding the program or uh, broadcast today. I see Brother Tony Smith has joined us. Rendon, uh, uh, that's in the Fort Worth, Dallas area. And uh, uh, we're always uh, glad to have uh, uh, our fellow Bible students with us. I know that more will be joining us in just a minute, uh, but let's see here. I, I, oh, I do want to mention that uh, this Saturday is the beginning of the Online Academy of Biblical Studies uh, fall semester. And uh, there are many classes. In, in, in fact, uh, any class that you want to take on any uh, Bible book, on uh, many Bible topics, not only on Saturdays, but I know that they have other classes that go on during the week on uh, a, a multiplicity of topics. Uh, I can remember when I started, I started out on a, I think it was a Monday or a Thursday night, uh, in regards to uh, uh, several different lessons, uh, and uh, I enjoyed that, and uh, teaching on Saturday. I have one class that is coming up, the Godhead Part 2, which will be focusing upon um, uh, the Holy Spirit, and uh, that will be uh, uh, an 18-week course, 
Uh, and uh, so if you are interested in topics such as that, then I would suggest that you get a hold of uh, uh, Trent at uh, oabs.org. Make sure that you register uh, for that class and uh, or all any of the classes. I, I know Brother Tony uh, teaches in uh, the class. Brother Bonner, who uh, joins us oftentimes on Friday, uh, he has a, a class, and uh, there are just some wonderful teachers and instructors and some wonderful classes that are going on. Well, let's see, with that in mind, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, get started. Uh, uh, well, here, I'll tell you what, before we get started, I see that uh, uh, Brother Tony Smith is gonna be teaching First and Second Thessalonians uh, at 11 a.m. And uh, I hate Tony even to uh, uh, advertise that because uh, that is during my hour, uh, 11 a.m. No, I don't. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, that class on First and Second Thessalonians, if you, uh, uh, that is, those are tremendous books, Brother Smith, and uh, uh, I find that so often ignored in the greater plan of uh, books, but uh, there are some great subject matters about preaching, about teaching, about uh, uh, the concept of, uh, of, um, of um, uh, the the premillennialism and uh, combating some of that. I, I mean, just a wonderful set of classes on first and second. And uh, I know Brother Smith will do a tremendous job with that. You know, Brother Smith, I might also begin to uh, announce that uh, uh, September, and I think it is, uh, I'll look on my calendar here, uh, the third week in uh, September, uh, which is September the 20th through the 24th, then uh, Brother Tony and I will be, uh, as well as others, at the Midwest Lectures uh, in the Kansas City area. And uh, uh, those lectures at the 39th Street uh, Congregation in Independence, Missouri. Now, those are all online, but I will tell you that if you can be present for some of those things, uh, they are even greater. Um, uh, you know, sometimes we say, well, you look better in person than you do. Uh, uh, well, that's that's the way these lectureships are. They are much better in person. And uh, but uh, if you can't make it in person, I know that uh, both uh, the 39th Street congregation and OABS uh, put those up online as well. Uh, Brother Javon asked that, Brother Javon, that is on Saturday. Uh, that is on Saturday that these classes uh, are beginning. And uh, so, uh, yes, great fellowship, Brother Smith, uh, great fellowship uh, in Christ. And uh, uh, that to me uh, is the uh, purpose of, or at least in part, uh, the in person, right? The in person aspect of. Uh, the ideal of a lectureship or things such as that. And uh, well, let's see here. Uh, with that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and start our, uh, uh, our song. And uh, we're gonna start Walking on Heaven's Road. Who's that walking down the road, carrying such a heavy load? Sinner, lay your burden down, you're walking on heaven's road. And when you're walking on heaven's road, I gotta lay down my heavy load. Jesus said he'd walk along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing all the way, I got sunshine in every day. Won't you come along and join me on that heaven's road? Ain't no people crying there, ain't no sadness anywhere. Ain't no need to shed a tear, you're walking on heaven's road. And when you're walking on heaven's road, I gotta lay down my heavy load. Jesus said he'd walk along with me, praise God, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing all the way, I got sunshine in every day. Won't you come along and join me on that heaven's road? Young folks walking hand in hand, singing with the angel band. All 
folks ain't so tired and warm. They're walking on heaven's road. And when you're walking on heaven's road, I gotta lay down my heavy load. Jesus said he'd walk along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing all the way. I got sunshine in every day. Won't you come along and join me on that heaven's road? Won't you come along and join me on that heaven's road? Ah, oh, my friends, you know how much I love and appreciate uh, uh, that song and the opportunity. Uh, that we are blessed with uh, to be able to join uh, in uh, singing of that song. My apologies that you had to listen to me during that song, but uh, I just can't help it, my friends. When good, when psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs are being sung, uh, I have a I have a compulsion uh, to join in. I hope uh, it's a good compulsion, but uh, it is a compulsion of mine to join in, brother David. I will see after the uh, class. If I can uh, send that through you uh, to you through a messenger, and uh, we'll see if we can get that done. Uh, you can go online, I know, and type in uh, 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 "Walking on Heaven's Road," and uh, you can uh, download that. But I will be I will be happy to be able to send that to you if messenger will allow it, and I think that it will. But we will check and see after the program uh, today. All right, so uh, today we, as mentioned, we are focusing our attention upon uh, uh, Philippians chapter four and verse number eight. I ask you to begin uh, a, um, uh, a reflective, uh, meditative, uh, uh, prayerful, careful um, uh, reading of, uh, of Philippians four verses six through nine, much like we did. Uh, or exactly like we did with uh, Psalm 23. I think this passage lends itself as all of the ones that we are really focusing our attention upon really deal with the psyche of man, uh, the uh, inner man, the uh, uh, makeup of, uh, uh, of man, that which man really is. I mean, we have an outer shell. Uh, there are things that connect the outer shell to the inner man, and uh, but Nevertheless, uh, that aspect of it is so valuable. I see that Miss Mona has put that uh, in the uh, chat window, and so you can download that there. I appreciate that uh, very much. Uh, certainly, she is uh, not Johnny on the spot. That would be Mona on the spot, uh, but uh, uh, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. And uh, so we're talking about this, and uh, we're talking about this in relationship now to the law of displacement. And I've described the law of displacement before uh, and even recently, so I won't spend a lot of time on this, but if you're only watching this particular video uh, or only in this class, then I do wanna give you a, a heads up. I, I think most of us, when we start getting involved in the definition, we really see, oh yeah, I understand what that is. That's very simple that if you have a bucket of water and it's completely full and uh, you begin to take something that is heavier than, well, even a, a water itself, if you begin to pour extra water in, guess what happens to the water that's already there? You might not notice it, uh, which water is doing what, but there's going to be a displacement, right? If you're filled to the brim with water and you put more water in it, guess what's going to happen? That bucket's going to overflow. Now, when I talk about teaching and preaching, uh, and, and we mentor uh, some of the uh, uh, younger students here with regards to the Memphis School of Preaching, and uh, I always tell them uh, one of the uh, important things is to teach from the overflow. Uh, and that means that you're consuming, you, you're going to have more information in your uh, mind, in your notes, in your lesson plan, then you're ever going to be able to get out. And uh, so that's vitally important in regards to the teaching process. You teach from the overflow and uh, not just the outline itself. 
and uh, the outline may be important to you. It may not, but I will say that the overflow, because you're going, especially if it's a teaching, you're going to get questions in relationship to that. And uh, that's where the overflow comes in handy, right? Uh, is uh, during that particular time. And so, but that is true with what we're talking about. Now, if you take some pebbles and some rocks and you start putting in that uh, bucket, it's going to begin to displace the water. That's the law of displacement uh, as we are talking about. And so sometimes, as I mentioned in the beginning, you, you, uh, you uh, uh, train a person up in the way that they ought to go. And through their entire life, they begin to develop into uh, a mature, spiritually minded uh, uh, Christian. Uh, and that's the process. That's the way it's designed to work. But then there are times in which, uh, because of the mess, the sin, the wickedness, the uh, uh, grotesque nature of uh, the world in which we live, we get our minds all messed up. Now, I'm not just talking about from a Christian vantage point here, but you take a person who has grown up in uh, denominational doctrine. Well, you've got to get rid of that denominational doctrine by placing the truth in that person's mind. If a person has grown up in, in uh, um, uh, hedonism, uh, uh, this American system of education that goes on, and we've grown up with that wickedness in our minds. We've got to displace that with the gospel. Uh, 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 we have uh, uh, Brother Javon and Brother David from uh, India, and uh, uh, things such as Hinduism and Muslim, uh, 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 Muslim uh, doctrine are uh, very strong in that area. And so when a person obeys the gospel, guess what? They come with a lot of that baggage and that baggage has to be gotten out. It has to be displaced from the mind. And so we're talking about a training of the mind. The human psyche has to be trained and sometimes it has to be retrained. Uh, again, uh, this could be an eternal series uh, if we're not careful uh, in regards to this. But in Philippians, uh, the book itself is telling us that we need to possess the mind of Christ, right? Philippians 2 and verse number 5, he says, let this mind be in you. Now, the word this uh, describes something that has already come about. So what mind did Christ have that allowed him uh, the, um, uh, the will for self-sacrifice? It was a lowliness of mind, verses three and four. It was a thought process that put the best interest of others ahead of their own interest. And so uh, what we find is that Christ was willing to do that for us. He came in the flesh. He dwelt among us, but he died. He didn't just die for us. He died on the cross for us. In other words, he was brutalized. Uh, he was mangled uh, in uh, that his visage was so marred more than any other man, Isaiah 52, verse number 12 through 14. And uh, his form and his visage, that is, uh, his uh, face and body uh, were in uh, were mangled in regards to that. Uh, now that's the heart of the gospel. The heartbeat of the gospel uh, it are the facts, and uh, you got to have the facts to build anything upon. And uh, uh, so Javon mentions. By the way, check out the uh, uh, the uh, 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 Facebook live chat because he mentioned some other very prominent uh, 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 doctrines that must be, you, you got to get those out of the mind of people. And the best way to do that is uh, to put the gospel in them. So that will change, right? We're talking about a pattern of thinking, and it will change the thinking process. 
Uh, it will change a selfish man to being unselfish. It will change a uh, uh, an idolatrous man uh, to l serving the one true living God. Going back to uh, uh, the books of First Thessalonians, uh, uh, in First uh, Thessalonians chapter one, verse number nine, uh, Paul was pleased with the progress of the Thessalonians because he says, "How ye turn to God from idols." You see the the, the displacement there. Uh, all of those idolatrous that idolatrous mindset of how uh, Zeus and uh, all of the pantheon of gods uh, now had to be replaced with the one true and living God. And uh, that's what has to happen. That's the art of or the law of displacement in regards to that. So we've talked about this uh, particular uh, process, and uh, I want you to notice in uh, verse number uh, seven, uh, let's just go ahead and pick up in verse number six. Be careful. Don't be anxious. Don't worry about uh, anything or be careful for nothing, but in everything. Here's the contrast. If you, if you have anxiety issues, then displacement of anxiety is trust in God. So he tells us uh, uh, that we need to, uh, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, to let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he says, think on these things. And he says, uh, those things which you have uh, both, uh, notice here, learned, and received and uh, heard and seen in me do. Notice the progress of that. You learn it, you receive it, you heard it. That's a, a, an extra step there. And seen it in me, now do it. Uh, that in and of itself is a perfectly important or a, an important meditative item there. And so pay attention to that. And uh, he says, and the God of peace shall be with you. So I want you to notice uh, in regards to this, uh, some of the uh, important elements in regards to this displacement. Uh, notice, first of all, that he says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are. Now, that whatsoever uh, is important to me. Uh, whatsoever things are uh, uh, is important. There are things that we ought uh, to dwell upon on a regular basis. What are those things? You see, that's what we're talking about. Well, uh, those things that include, right, truth. Now, here's a good question to meditate upon. Why is truth at the beginning of this list? Why, why, is, uh, uh, why is it that truth begins the list? Well, it's interesting. If you look over at uh, James chapter 3, I think you'll find something similar in nature. When James is talking about the wisdom that is from above. And some people miss this when they perceive that unity is the highest principle within biblical relationships. That is not true. Uh, that is secondary in nature. Now, uh, you know, you might be shocked. I find a lot of people shocked at that. They say, we need to do everything and anything to maintain unity. And I'm like, nope. That's wrong. See, it's, uh, we've got to learn to think like God thinks. And if unity 
was the highest priority with God, then he would have never driven Adam and Eve out of the garden. You see, there's a higher principle than uh, unity, and that is holiness. That is truth. So notice how James deals with this, and we'll go all the way down to James chapter uh, 3 and verse number 17, where he makes this contrast. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Now, uh, we have truth, honesty, just, pure, lovely, and uh, uh, but uh, in James, I believe that the purity that he is talking about is the idea of uh, the purity of truth, wisdom from above. You, you, that's a contrast to wisdom that is from below. So we're naturally talking about the truth to begin with, right? The wisdom as opposed to, in fact, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 would be a good uh, item to include here as well when it talks about the contrast between the wisdom of God and the wisdom of man. And uh, in 1 Corinthians, uh, he makes that distinction when he says, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, verse number 24, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see, uh, your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world. What the world considers foolish. Now that, that tells you about the thinking process of the world and why we should not follow after the thinking process. That's, as, as uh, one brother said, uh, he said, that's stinking thinking. <laughs> In other words, it don't meet up uh, to the quality of God. And so we're trying to change that thinking process, trying to change the way uh, that I process my reason. You know, there's, there's a purpose to the statement where God says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. I need to learn to reason like God. He's not saying, hey, let us sit down at the table of God and negotiate our salvation, negotiate uh, what's going to be best for us. That's not what he's saying. If you come and sit down at the table of God, then you're going to be blessed when you accept the things of God. So why is truth? the very first, because everything else flows from it. There, there is nothing else that is, uh, that where you, there's nothing else uh, or no other place that you can start other than with the truth. And that is God's word, right? John 14 in verse number six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except or but by me. Uh, Jesus would also say in John chapter 1, right, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then in verse number 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten, full of grace and uh, truth. But now notice this in uh, John chapter 8, right? Verse number 32, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So truth is the best place to start when you're talking about uh, this list of virtues, uh, this list of things that need to be dwelt upon. It's the what we might call the headwaters, right? It's the, it's the spring by which uh, the waters flow down this mountain. And uh, so truth, uh, thy word, uh, Jesus would say in John 17 and verse number 17, thy word is truth. We must begin uh, with the truth. Now then, the, 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 the opposite of that, or we might say uh, whether we're talking about uh, not just lies, 
uh, not just evil speaking, not just uh, 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 those are not, but any kind of alteration of truth. As Paul would say in Galatians chapter one, when he's talking about uh, to manipulate the gospel in just one point. You so you can talk about here, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized, uh, that that gets you, but then you have to be circumcised in order to uh, truly be a child of God. No, you have just, uh, you have just uh, adulterated the word of God. To add to, to take away from, uh, those are things that will do damage uh, and will become something other than the gospel, right? And so it's important that we understand the value of truth. But what is exactly are we talking about when we talk about truth? Yes, we're talking about that which complies with reality, right? But it's so much more than that. It's not just that. I'm not talking about uh, uh, whether or not uh, uh, um, uh, something is uh, 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 a black or whether or not something is blue. I'm not talking about the color system. I'm not talking about whether or not uh, two plus two equals four. Uh, those are things that comply with reality. And yes, we should always accept the truth in those matters. But I'm talking about the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth that stems from God's word, those things that are valid and, and uh, honest and uh, reliable those things that are unchanging, you see. There, there are some things that, are, uh, that change constantly in this world, but there are some things that are unchangeable, and uh, that's what we're talking about when we talk about uh, the truth of God's Word. I wish we had uh, 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 time to delve into. There are a lot of Bible passages uh, that talk about something as real, something that is true or truthful. Uh, those are things that we ought to follow, you see. That's what we're talking about when we talk about uh, the truth. God is truth, and he cannot lie, right? Titus chapter 1 and verse number 2. So the things of God are the things which I need to meditate upon. That word in verse number, at the end of verse number 8, think on these things meditate upon these things, dwell upon them. What, what the things that you dwell upon are the things which will become your thought process. They are the things that will train your mind. And so if you're always, th this is the, uh, the, the horrific nature and the things that are, are pure and lovely. Uh, would certainly fit into this, but you think about the the nature of reading constantly from denominational material. I know people who say, "Listen, I can pick, I can, I can chew, uh, I can chew the bones, or I can spit out the bones, and all of that." Uh, I under I understand that concept, uh, but uh, uh, I, there are some people that constantly read, and their entire mentality stems from the denominational world. They begin to, they begin to uh, uh, latch on to those things. And, and so what I'm suggesting is that there is a danger uh, in those areas. And uh, we, we need to be, I always tell young gospel preachers, if you're just starting out, uh, don't pick up a commentary set. You may have them in your library for later, but don't pick them up. Uh, uh, listen, study from the Word of God. It's going to be a lot harder. I realize that. It's going to take a little bit of extra time. I realize that. But stick with the truth and stick solely with the truth. Now, there are some uh, aids uh, that you're going to need along the way. I understand that strong. Uh, Strong's exhaustive concordance may be of aid to you in that. I, I, I get all of those things. Uh, but, uh, oh, I like that. Brother Smith says to study error is to learn error. Uh, and uh, so we need to be extremely careful uh, with that. Uh, uh, Brother McGinnis uh, mentions uh, uh, that uh, Psalm 1, that's the man of Psalm 1, right? Blessed is the man that doth not. Uh, and uh, he he doesn't uh, uh, 
Uh, he doesn't, uh, uh, he doesn't uh, walk by. He doesn't stop and stand in. He doesn't uh, sit down with, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, doth he meditate uh, day and night. Uh, Brother Javon mentioned second Timothy two fifteen. study uh, to show thyself approved unto God, not study the will of men, but study the will of God. He makes that very clear uh, in that context. Uh, uh, the Bible is its own best commentary, Miss Mona says, and that's exactly right. Uh, we need to focus our attention upon those kind of items. So the truth then becomes very important uh, in regards uh, to that. But it's not just about the truth, right? Not just we're not just meditating upon the those things that are true, but also those things that are honest. Some uh, translations would have honorable. Uh, well, if it's honest, it's honorable, right? Uh, but uh, that's what we're talking about here. Those things uh, that pertain under the things that are beneficial are those things that are honorable. Look with me at Acts chapter 6, talking about the Bible, its own best commentary. Uh, think about the usage of this particular word here in uh, Acts chapter 6 and verse number 3. Now, there was a neglect of certain widows among uh, the brethren, and so uh, uh, the disciples or the apostles decide uh, that they're going to take and uh, make sure that this is taken care of. And so they say, wherefore, brethren, look at among you seven men of honest report. Seven, find you seven honorable men. And then he describes uh, the uh, uh, ideal of how they are honorable. Uh, and uh, so that becomes very important, right? Now look with me at Romans chapter 12, another beautiful section of Scripture that certainly teaches us about the transformed mind of Romans 12, 1 and 2. He describes it for us. Notice with me in verse number 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Provide things that are honorable in the sight of all men. Look with me at uh, Romans 13 and verse number 13. He says, uh, let us walk honestly as in the day, not rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. By the way, you're talking about a passage that is in conflict with many within our society, they seem to think that the only way to get their way is through rioting and drunkenness and chambering and wanting uh, wantonness and strife and envy. But here, those things are contrary to the things that we need to be thinking about. Don't even think about those things. Meditate upon those things that are honorable. It means worthy of respect, things that are entitled uh, to honor. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, look with me there as uh, uh, Paul begins to uh, talk about uh, the process of choosing deacons. He's already talked about elders, but I want you to notice in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 8, he says, likewise, must the deacons be grave? Ah, oh, grave, not double tongue, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. These are men of uh, gravity, meaning they are men of dignity. Dignity. That that these are men that dwell upon things that are honorable, things that are honest, and they have incorporated that into their own lives. So also must their wives be. So he says, uh, even so must their wives be, in verse number 11, gray, not slander, sober, faithful in all things. They need to be grave. There needs to be a sense of uh, 
uh, uh, dignity, as we mentioned, dignified. They need to be serious minded in regards to that. Notice with me in Titus chapter two, as Titus talks about the older men, he says uh, in verse number two, this is Titus 2, 2. He says that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. That they need to be individuals that dwell upon the things that are honest, the things that are honorable, you see, those things that are uh, respectable. You know, uh, it, Barclay, uh, and I'm not a big fan of Barclay, but uh, I did notice uh, uh, and uh, that, that he mentions that the word usage, I'm just talking about the word usage, not the commentary section, but the word usage is that this was used as a word that would be used of things in uh, temples. They, they would be words that the Greeks would have used of their gods. Zeus would have been honorable. Uh, he uh, uh, something dignified, something worthy of putting your thoughts on. Now, that's the way the Greeks thought about that. But the Bible chose this word so that we might think about the things of God, that the words of God are the things that are honorable, you see. Uh, they are the things that are honest in regards to that. So there are things that are dishonest. And Paul would say, uh, Brother Tony, I hate to keep going back to uh, uh, your books on First and Second Thessalonians, but this is what I was talking about uh, earlier. When you go to First uh, Thessalonians chapter two, you'll find Paul's apostolic, what we'd call, I'd call apostolic methodology here. Notice what he says here, beginning in verse number one: For you yourselves, brethren, know our entrance into you that it was not in vain. But even after that we had suffered before, were shamefully entreated, as you know at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God. But notice this, with much contention. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, I, I, I got to pause here because there are just some brethren that don't understand that the things that are honest, the things that are true, the things that are valuable to think about cause controversy in people's lives. You don't change without controversy. You don't change without there being some friction in the thought process. I'm going to think the way that I think unless there is some sharpening. Oh, wait a minute, sharpening. Hmm. I seem to remember that uh, iron sharpeneth iron, huh? or a friend sharpeneth a friend, as uh, iron sharpeneth iron, when, when you lay that blade down uh, and wet that blade and you go through that process of sharpening, you've got iron on iron or you've got friction that occurs. Now, if you take that uh, knife, and I'll illustrate it uh, with the pencil, my knife is in the drawer there, but if you take that pencil and you take uh, that which you're going up against and you just move them both in the same direction, there's no friction. There's no sharpening that goes on. One has to e stay still and the other move in a different uh, in a move or they must move in different directions for there to be any sharpening. So friction must occur in this process. So notice Paul goes on to say, but we were allowed, this is verse or verse number three, but our exhortation was not of deceit. You see, it's of truth and honesty, not of deceit, nor of uncleanliness, nor in guile. But we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, so we speak. That's why I say this is a dangerous place to be because the truth is going to be spoken here without any apologies. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about honesty, you see. So now let's also, let's continue this thought uh, because he says, I want you to back to Philippians uh, chapter uh, four and verse number eight. He says, I want you to think upon, to dwell upon those things that are right. So you have those things are just, those things that are uh, true, 
those things that are honest and those things that are just. That, and that, this is the ideal of, of the word, that which is right. Uh, uh, we, we need to dwell upon those things that are uh, pure and those things that are just. Think about the ideal of something being just. It, it's something that is justified. Uh, it is something that is right, something that is righteous, right? That's what we're talking about, uh, something that is uh, that God calls righteous. Well, if you think about uh, Paul's statement in Romans chapter uh, 1, and uh, you look at uh, verse number 16, he says that he's not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein, notice this, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed that which is right, how to be right with God, not only all the way from the righteousness, the righteous element of God, but also all the way down through the concept of being right with God. So Paul says the gospel is powerful because it teaches me how to be right with God. That in and of itself, my friends, is enough for me to say, that's what I want to dwell upon because it is right. Well, let's think about, we're, we're running out of time here. I, I know we spent uh, probably more time than we uh, had on uh, truth, but let's talk about those things that are pure now. Those things that are pure. We need to dwell upon those things that are pure, the pure things of life itself, those things that are not adulterated, right? Those things that are not deluded, uh, those things that are pure. So James would say, pure religion and undefiled before God. See, you cannot have something defiled and it be pure at the same time. Uh, he says those are the things that we need uh, to focus our attention upon. I want to also uh, turn your attention to, um, um, let's see, where is it at? I think it's Haggai uh, that I want to go to. It came to my mind just right now. So uh, Haggai chapter 2, I believe, is where we're going to want to go in regards to this. And uh, in Haggai chapter 2, uh, he says in uh, uh, verse number 11, he says, And thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, If one, this, ask him concerning, what does the law of Moses say? If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread or portage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy? In other words, if you have something that is holy, can you touch something that is not holy, and the holy cause that which is unholy to become holy? Well, the, the priest answer correctly. They say no. Uh, it, it cannot make that which is unholy. So notice the issue that he's dealing with. So now he asks this question. If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. So the idea is that the, uh, the things that are impure cannot make you pure. And if that which is pure is contaminated by that which is impure, then it becomes impure. I, I, Dane, uh, Brother McGinnis mentions uh, uh, 1 Peter 1 and verse number 13, and that's exactly right. Be ye holy uh, for, uh, well, a little bit later on, he mentions verse uh, 15 and 16, right? That which is, uh, uh, be ye holy for I am holy. Uh, now in verse number 13, notice what he says here. He says, uh, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope unto the end for the grace that is brought to you at the revelation of uh, Jesus Christ. 
And uh, but after that, he begins to talk about uh, the lust and things such as that. And so all of those things come to mind, right? So think about those things that think about, dwell upon. How, how is your day thus far and the rest of your day planned out? Is it planned out so that you can uh, dwell upon, meditate, think about uh, the things that are uh, the things that are true and uh, uh, the things that are uh, 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 honest and the things that are pure and the things that are just the things that are lovely and a good report. Uh, think about these, think on these things. And by the way, like I said, I, I wish we had time for all of these, but you know, there are some things that are lovely uh, and some things that are not so lovely. Uh, let me just close maybe with this uh, item. What you dwell upon, the, the world lies in wickedness, we are told. And you can dwell upon all the negative things that are out there in this world. And it will not do you a bit of good. If you just do, if you watch, I don't care if it's CNN, MSNBC, all of the uh, Fox News, if you watch that 27 for 365 days, I am convinced that you will go bonkers. You cannot put that kind of junk constantly in your mind. Think about those things that are lovely, my friends. Think about those things that are of good report. Those things that are out there that you know that are good. Think about Epaphroditus earlier. Hold men like this in high regard. Think about that kind of sacrifice. Oh, Tina mentions uh, that fear is not lovely. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, we can so infuriate our minds with fear and depression that uh, we can't get out of it. We got to change that kind of thinking. Well, my friends, I want to thank you for joining me today here on Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine. Think on these things.